friends. Now, I am Christopher Sir, <coughs> your science teacher. Now, we are all locked down. Outside the corona is at large, inside we are locked down. You must be wondering why Christopher Sir is having so many balloons here. Is it Sir's birthday? No, 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 no. It's not my birthday. Then why so many balloons? We are going to use that as teaching aid. I don't have my regular teaching aid, the blackboard, the chalk, etc. But I have my laptop and I have these parents. Now, today we are going to study about matter. And we see that matter is made up of very tiny particles which is not visible even with the most powerful microscope. But we will see the representation in front of these parents. Now, this atom is the smallest unit of matter which has all the property of matter but generally cannot exist alone. It exists in combined state known as molecules. Now, look at this balloon. This represents an atom of hydrogen. But this cannot exist alone. When it has to exist alone, it exists as hydrogen molecule. Where two atoms of hydrogen have chemically combined together to form a molecule. Next, this is an atom of nitrogen. This also does not exist alone. Nitrogen exists as nitrogen molecule in which two atoms of nitrogen have chemically combined together to form a nitrogen molecule. And <clears throat> this represents an oxygen atom, the oxygen we breathe. This also exists independently as molecules and a molecule of oxygen has two atoms of oxygen. Now we come to this one. Mickey Donald? No, 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 no. This is not Mickey Donald. This represents water molecule in which there is an atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. And the last thing, this represents an atom of helium. Now the atom of helium is also the molecule because the atom can exist independently. In all noble gases, the atom can exist independently. So atom is the molecule as well. And let us start our class chapter 1, Matter. Now the topic for today is Matter. What is Matter? Anything that has mass and occupies space is called Matter. Everything whether living or non-living, man-made or natural, small or big, solid, liquid or gas, have mass and occupy space. In this figure, the mass of potato is 5 kg. Now, both the potato and the iron weight are of 5 kg. But we see that space occupied by the iron weight is much less than the potato. This means that matter can have more mass even if it occupies lesser space and vice versa. Now we come to composition of matter. Matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms and molecules. These particles are so small that we cannot see them even with a high power microscope. Now, atom is the smallest possible unit of matter which has all properties of that matter. Atoms generally do not exist in free state. They generally exist in combined state known as molecules. In case of noble gases like helium, neon, argon, krypton, atoms exist in free state. Now in this particular case the atom and molecule are one and the same. Now below are some examples of atoms and molecules. Now first is a hydrogen atom. The symbol is H. The second is a hydrogen molecule. The symbol is H2. The third is oxygen atom. Symbol is O. And fourth is oxygen molecule. Symbol is O2. And the last is a helium, helium atom. Symbol is He. And this atom is also the molecule. So here the atom and molecule are the same. Next we come to nitrogen. The first is a nitrogen atom, symbol capital N. The second is a nitrogen molecule, symbol N2. And the third is a water molecule, H2O. Here two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen have combined together to form water. 
Now you know that matter exists in three states, solid, liquid and gas. You have also learned that matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms and molecules. These particles are arranged in such a manner that they have space between them and this space is known as intermolecular space. The particles of any matter attract each other. This force of attraction is known as intermolecular force of attraction. When the intermolecular space between the particles is less, that means when the particles are closer, the intermolecular force of attraction is more stronger and vice versa. In the first figure, we see that the intermolecular space is less between the particles and so the intermolecular force of attraction is more. In the second figure, we see that intermolecular space is more, so intermolecular force of attraction is less. Now we come to characteristics of a solid. The particles are very closely packed in a solid. The intermolecular space is very small. The intermolecular force of attraction is so strong that the particles cannot move freely. Due to this strong intermolecular force, solids have a fixed shape and volume and cannot be compressed easily. Solids do not flow, so no container is needed to hold them. Solids can only change their shape by force. Next we come to characteristics of a liquid. The particles are less closely packed than solids, so they have more intermolecular space to move. The intermolecular force of attraction is not as strong as in solids. The particles can slide over each other. Therefore, they have a fixed volume but not a fixed shape. They take the shape of container which holds them. Liquids can be compressed to a certain extent. As liquids can flow, they need a container to hold them. Next, we come to characteristics of a gas. The particles in a gas are very far from each other. So, gases have very large intermolecular space to move freely. The intermolecular force of attraction is negligible to hold them together. Therefore, the gases do not have a fixed shape and volume. They spread out to occupy the entire space available and take the shape of any container. Gases can be compressed easily. And lastly, gases can flow, so they need a container to hold them. Now watch the following animation of water molecule in the three states solid, liquid and gas. Now here we are seeing water molecules in solid state. You see how close they are. The intermolecular space is very less and intermolecular force of attraction is more. Now let us see what happens when we provide heat energy to these molecules from outside. Now we are going to provide heat energy to these molecules and see what happens. We can see that the vibration has increased. The molecules are vibrating faster and faster and the intermolecular space is also increasing and increasing faster. Now the distance between the molecules have increased and now it has changed into water. Now on heating further, the distance will increase further and further and further. The intermolecular space is becoming larger and larger and larger. And now we'll see it has changed into a gas. Now you see the molecules are existing as water vapor in this state. Now again what will happen when we cool them? So let's start cooling them. Now we are cooling it and we are seeing that the speed is getting slower and slower means the kinetic energy of molecules is decreasing and soon they will be coming nearer that means the intermolecular space will decrease and decrease and ultimately they will come back as... Oh, now time for question answers. Question number one. What is matter? What are its two properties? Question number two. How are intermolecular force of attraction and intermolecular space interrelated? Question number three. Write any five differences between solid, liquid and gas. Now that's all for today. Do your homework. Stay, stay safe. And till we meet again.
that's all for today do your homework stay safe wash your hands when you come from outside we have seen in this class and we have seen the animation how water converts <coughs> into vapor how vapor converts back into water and back into solid and since you have attended the class very attentively i am going to give a gift for you here